girl, you got it. There you go. Are you putting your hand on my yeah, throat? I can say Oh, it. no. I'm so, the I'm, so, I'm, so <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so, so proud, proud of me. you. Yeah, what are we talking about? We're reading fan fiction today. Oh. Yeah, fan fiction. Because was like, you gotta read a fan fiction. That's exactly how her voice sounds. No exaggeration. You do not want me to read this. It's a I'm, supernatural fan fiction. Uh, you're not gonna bring this to justice. But wait. You haven't completed Supernatural, so this could be full of spoilers for you. So who even knows? It's called Twist and Shout. All I know is that, uh, that, like, uh... Isn't Twist and Shout a Beatles song? What begins as a transforming love between Dean Winchester and Castiel Novak in the summer of 1965 quickly derails into something far more tumultuous. Oh God. When Dean is drafted in the Vietnam War, though the two both voice their relationship is one where saying goodbye is never a real truth. The story becomes fraught with tragedy and circumstance. In an era where homosexuality and especially vulnerable, twist and shout is the story of love transcending time and returning over and over in its many forms and faithful as the sea. Aww, y'all. That's a pretty touching, you know, little... Makes me want to cry. I'm just gonna let it, let it burn. Okay. Like Usher said. Cause I can't do it. I think you should let it burn. You been killing me. Oh, I don't want you. Since you been gold. <laughs> what? Is, this, is there a remix of Since You Can Burn or something? So this Twist and Shouts takes place back in the 1960s, back when they were in the wartime fighting in the sweaty... the Nazis, The Nazis. When did World War II end? I feel like it ended before 1965, though. No, 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 it's the Vietnam War. Yeah. April 1965. Kaz held his drink high as he navigated the crowd. It was as if the room were made of nothing but elbows. So, okay, what type of room is this, man? Imagine a room made of elbows. <laughs> I heard about f- falling in a pool of pip hands, but <laughs> this is something. As he pushed people past him and into him, the threat of beer being sloshed onto his clothes, in all too real danger, he jostled <laughs> past Anna Milton, all long red hair, even longer legs, and she smiled at him, stopping a moment on her way to the back of the house. Killer party, huh? She said over the dull drone of people talking and the music flooded from the dining room. Cass nodded, grinning a little, using the back of his hand to push his glasses back into place. She giggled and touched the white collar of his shirt, kissing him on the cheek. It's so good to see you at the library. Finals are torture. She laughed and Cass shrugged, pulling his drink down to chest level. Chesties. Now that he wasn't moving so much, tell me about it. You think you did okay? She said, stepping closer, and he could smell her perfume and the powder she had used on her neck. It stood out on her white skin as a delicate film from the heat of the party and all the bodies packed into the tiny sorority house. He was tempted to wipe away a smudge that hadn't blended correctly out of some absent desire to fix. I'm reading this in poor reading rhythm. Because this screen is so bright that it's burning my eyes right now. I did all. I did as well as I could, you. He answered, watching her roll her eyes in the ceiling, moving one shoulder casually. What? Oh, uh, yeah. So she rolled one eye to the ceiling. <laughs> God. Hey, was she getting crunk? I, I guess. Oh, say my guess. I don't think you want to start reading, man. I'm just reading small seconds. <laughs> yes, I've That's seen all you I'm... read things, man. I don't think you want to start. I'm just doing some small sp- Wait, I've t- I, I'm holding this the wrong direction. Sorry if the first half was sound. My reading was really muffled. I turned my mic to the right direction now. Castiel could feel the blush creeping up and coloring his ears, but he continued to shrug the compliment off. Well, enough talk about school. I'm glad you're having a good time. She's tucked in a strand of red hair behind her ear. There's lots of girls here, you know. She pushed him again with her hand, and Cass laughed nervously. Oh. That's that's the laugh? That's a nervous laugh. Yeah. He trailed. Looking around, she was right. There were plenty of girls. Here. She stepped forward and straightened his collar and tie a little, smoothing her hands over his shoulders. 
And remember to smile. You could get lucky tonight. I doubt it. Castillo coughed, and she let her hand swing back down by her sides. She gave him a long look and smiled. I don't know, she sing-songed. Come on. For you, it'll be like shooting fish in a barrel. Castiel scoffed, taking a sip of beer <gasps> while she laughed at him. F finishing his swallow, he just opened his mouth to say something else when there was a displaced roar from the front of the house. Several people turned to look, some fidgeting nervously. An engine gunned in the archway of to the foyer. Castiel could see a bright beam of a yellow light spearing through the front window. Someone crashing the car through the window right now, or is the lights just so intense? Yeah, it's gotta be. Cops, someone said. A girl, her voice nervous. A friend shushed her, and everyone was quiet. The music pouring out of the dining room, seeming louder than ever in the gathered silence. A group of guys moved to the window, and though he could barely see him over them, he craned his neck to watch as they crowded around it, the hands on the glass. Who the hell invited him? One of them said, pulling back from the pan to glare behind high mat the party goers. What? Okay. Cass frowned and the engine cut, the light going with it. He parts right on the lawn. I don't know why I'm making them all sound like. I don't know why bro. they're bothered about the lawn. <laughs> don't you? People, just... people where is the party? If people don't park on top of my house, I'm happy. Mm. So that was the light he had seen. He felt his pulse quicken. Whoever it was, they had the guts parking on Delta Lawn in the middle of the night, especially when they were apparently not welcome. I can't believe she did it, Anna said, and Cass turned to see her shaking her head, sighing as she crossed her arms over her chest. <sighs> she looked at Cass and raised her eyebrows. If you heard from me, I told her not to tell him about tonight. It's going to be nothing but trouble. Who? Cass asked, looking back what little he could see of the foyer. You'll see. Anna laughed. And when Cass turned to continue speaking to her, she was already halfway across the room, slipping away into the kitchen. Cass, Cass blew a breath out of his mouth and then glanced back at the foyer, still curious. Two girls had replaced the boys at the window and were whispering to each other as he approached. He stared over their heads, but it was too dark to see from this from his distance what they were looking at what this is such a dramatic entrance for this who I, i'm assuming dean is entering and he's I, gonna walk in i'm dreaming this danny devito and his magnum dawn did you see him martha don't look oh, oh i can't help it he's so bad <laughs> i can't he's so bad he's so bad would you look at that bike can you believe it? He and Lisa. They giggled into their hands, attempting to keep their breath like from three. fogging up the glass, and one, one of them the... began tugging on their skirts in a little anxiety. One of those three attachable bikes, you know. Long ones. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bad! Cass furrowed, and he tried to look past one of their heads to understand, but he could only manage to make out was a shadowy group of people in front of what must have been the motorcycle they were referring to. It was too dark to tell the model, but the group was really two, four fraternity brothers. Castiel knew from school, and one individual a little taller. His back angled towards Cass. Castiel blinked and then rolled his eyes as the girl squealed. Do you think they'll fight? Rich looks like he's just spoiling for one. What? You're yeah, spoiling yeah. for a fight? Spoiling the broth! Oh! Cass snorted at the conversation and turned away, trying to remember if he would end up in the dining room if he went past the staircase on his left. Someone had changed the album, and now the Beatles was filtering through the house. Abandoning the otherwise uninteresting stranger, Castiel made his way past the stairs, itching to dance. He's like walking down the stairs, popping and locking in 1965 to the it. Beatles. Basically. Yeah. You know, the swing or something. <laughs> Get low. Get low. Three, six, nine. <laughs> Thank you, fine. <laughs> Get low. Get low. To the window. To the walls. He bounced a little on his toes. Need a scratch. And hummed to the beat as he turned a corner and excellent. The front parlor had been transformed into a makeshift dance floor. The sofas pushed to another room. 
one was even on the outside to make space for people already jammed inside rocking with the music. Oh. All these parties sound lame because crunk music has not been invented yet. So what are they even dancing to right now? Uh, I know. They're dancing to prehistoric. <laughs> they're da- Like, how do you get dance to like, like, hey, Jude. In the sea of people, he could see Hester laughing and bobbing her head as a boy whispered something in her ear. <laughs> no, I'm not. Hey, uh, hey, how you doing, little mama? Let me whisper in your ear. Tell you something that you might like to hear. Got a nice little buddy. <laughs> and the head holds off. Mind if I touch it to see if it's soft. She was looking in Cass's direction, though, and he waved and she grinned, lifting her hand to beckon him over. I beckon thee! Yeah. He looked around for a place to set his drink and settled for the mantle already littered with bottles, and he hurried to her pardoning himself as he knocked against the dancing people. So he's running through the crowd, just knocking dancers over. No, he's just slamming. Who are too engrossed in the music or their partners to care. 60th century mosh pits up here. Kiss! Hester said, tugging his arm, coaxing him into a twist. (laughs) (laughs) He followed her example, and soon the two of them were dancing, walking into the groove of the group. Oh my god! So have you heard? Hester said suddenly in an interlude, pressing herself close to him. Cass bent his ear instinctively to her, still moving his feet, and she repeated herself louder. Did you hear about who came? Cass pulled back and rolled his eyes again, shoving his glasses back up his nose. What? Oh, okay. Oh, I re- <laughs> thought he took off his glasses, shoved it up a nostril. That image played in my mind. He really needed to get the frames adjusted. I heard, who is it? He asked, and Hester gaped at him, her arms swinging in time with the music. You mean you don't know? Well, I mean, I guess it's someone Lisa knows. He continued barking a laugh, and Hester shook her shoulders to rhythm, even as she gave Cast the most incredulous look he'd ever seen. He frowned, annoyed. You just finished your first year, and you don't even know who Dean Winchester is? Honestly, she huffed. I mean, he's the only hes only the top racer in the county. And the <laughs> cutest repeat offender in the city. <laughs> I think it's true. He's got a record, but a lot of people think it's just rumors. Thanks. Cass laughed at her. His curiosity peaked. <laughs> the peak so what about him he twist he teased twisting again hester bent closer well you know lisa and him were together in high school that's all i know there's all this scandal about it because he's so bad and she's a delta girl you know Uh, you know anna said she told her not to invite him cass added i did know that much hester nodded enthusiastically i'd believe it a boy like dean at a delta party that's asking for trouble He parked on the lawn. What a troublemaker. Yeah, you know, parking on the lawn. The lawn. Staying out five minutes past curfew. Yeah, I only love you when it's half half past five, you know. (laughs) That's like such a, that line by the week. I only love you when it's half past five. So we only loves you when it's 5.30 p.m. That's not even that late of a time, man. Yeah. That's what Steen's gonna do. He did not, she shrieked, blushing. Oh, gosh, he's just so bad. Don't you think? Did Rich fight him? He said he would if he showed. Those two hate each other. Wait, did you see it? His bike? She grabbed his arm and Cass smiled at her, shrugging. Maybe. Did you, Cass? Did you? It was too dark, he admitted, and Hester let his arm go with a disapproving noise. Disapproving. <laughs> the whispering man. Yeah, I just wanted to do something. Here, enjoying your words, but I wish I could. You can't read, dude. I, I could read, man. Dude, if if I let you read this, this one chapter is gonna take double the time to finish. <laughs> I'm just, I just want to do something. I want to be a part of something beautiful. You, know you can't read, bro. I want to be a you part know. of something beautiful. Just, just look into my soul. <laughs> you can't read. I gotta try. You're hoping, wait. You awful tease. That bike has won him so much money, he's going to be state champ this year. I just know it. We'll read about him in all the papers, and he'll win the big cup and take some lucky gal. You hoping it's you? Cass 
prodded, stepping closer to her to get out of someone's way. She tossed her head. Not on my life! He's beautiful, but he goes through girls like seasons. So he dates four girls a year? Well, in all those rumors, not on my life. What rumors? He stepped back again, even though Hester held tight on his arm. You mean you haven't heard? Where have you been? This guy knows nothing. This I wouldn't be surprised if Cass didn't know his ABCs. That sounds like me. What are you looking up right now? I'm looking up Twisted Shout. Are you trying to sing Twisted Shout? No! Are you trying to read along no, with me? No, no, no. Maybe. No! <laughs> Don't you try to find where I am and hop in awkwardly, man. Castillo shook his head and Hester tugged on his arm. This girl tugs on his arm way too much, dude. Every, like, conversation ends with her arm tugging. Dragging him through the waves of people and placing them near the stairwell where it was less crowded, she motioned for him to get closer, and he did so, ducking his head so that he could hear her more clearly. Apparently, he's been raising his little brother since he was a kid himself, and his dad was a deadbeat or something like that. Cass frowned and pulled away, holding his drink at his chest. That's awful. That's what I heard. People say it's a rumor, but I think it's actually true. Well, if it's true, that doesn't really make it a rumor, does it? Cass didn't say anything, placing his drink on one of the steps behind Hester. Instead, she picked up a cup beside it and held it up to her nose, sniffing and making a face as she put it back. She co- What? So she just sniffed a drink and set it down, dude? <laughs> Could have been cocaine laced. I also heard the reason why he and Lisa broke up was because he's a homosexual. Cash jerked his head back and his eyes wide behind his glass. She shrugged again. Only rumors again. Cass could go either way. Gone to the bridge of his nose with his finger. Hester smiled and laughed at him, grabbed him by the wrist and dragged him back into the mob of people before stopping near the kitchen. Wait right here. I want to get something to drink. Then we can dance some more, okay? Yeah, okay. Cass smiled and leaned against the wall, watching the bodies in front of him move along with the music. A few minutes later, Hester came barreling out of the kitchen, grabbing Cass by the arm, surprising him and causing him to jump. The Hester is quite the, the wrecking ball of a lady, man. I hope so. Are you trying to find where I am? I'm trying to find it, man. <laughs> you better not hop in. I wanna... You better not hop in. This is not... gonna be tragic. I can catch up. Oh my god, Cass, I love this song. She exclaimed, Don't you just love the Beatles? She moved her body and bopped her head, holding Cass's wrist in her hand and moved with her. Yeah, they're great, he grinned, and Hester grinned back. We should go see them one day. Ah, oh, back when the Beatles were not dead. But you'd rather see Elvis. I know, I know. Jeez, Cass, who are you, my mother? Hey, without your precious linen, we would have never gotten over here. Don't be so bitter. Elvis is fine. If you're ancient. Castillo rolled his eyes, moved along with Hester, bobbing his head, and Hester wouldn't stop grinning. But then Cass's attention was drawn elsewhere. He saw someone walk out of the kitchen. Hester stopped. When she noticed that Castillo wasn't dancing anymore, she followed his eyes. That's him? She spoke low and jabbed Cass with her elbow. Who s he snapped his attention to her. Who? Dean Winchester. Oh my god, isn't he just so handsome? Castiel watched as Dean walked through the crowd of the room right past him. He could feel the brush of his leather jacket against his arm. He sent, and it sent a sort of chill through his body. Dean continued walking without looking back, and he rounded a corner and disappeared. Hey! Hester waved her hand in front of his face and jumped back, bumping into someone forcing him to apologize quickly before turning back to Hester. Hey, are you okay? You sort of drifted off there for a moment. So he snared into his eyes and got all dreamy, dreamy-eyed for Dean, man. Yeah, with the leather touching. You know, once a leather touches another brother. <laughs> Ooh, dead cow skin! Mm, eye contact. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. He paused for a moment, pushing his glasses up the bridge of his nose. He looked angry. He does this a lot. When you wear glasses, they slide in all the time. Rich probably tried to fight him, but... He was probably asking for it. I heard he likes to start things, you know. She shrugged and tugged at Cass's sleeve, pouting. Come on, let's keep Go dancing. This is the only sleeve. thing keeping me from going insane here. Cass stared at the spot where Dean had turned for a moment longer before nodding and letting his body start to reacclimatize, acclimate. What? Re to the music. to the, acclimate to the music. His attention back to Hester. 
Yeah, okay. He smiled at Hester and swayed in front of him, moving her arms at her sides, and he matched her motions, keeping beat with the song. Didn't take very long before he lost himself in the music. I can't find my body! <laughs> Drifting movements of the other people around him, and he smiled at Hester. She bit her lip. Her lip coyly. I'm so coy. <laughs> <laughs> sneaking his hands to her waist. How, how do you sneak your hands to your? Like, you know, like sneaky? say you're trying to pit pocket to some somebody, but you just end up hugging them. <laughs> he stalled for a moment. When his palms brushed over her dress, his throat growing a little thick, his fingers twitched, and he settled them on her body. Her own arms coming up over his shoulders, he took a breath and tried to look over her shoulder. Even as she tried to peer right into his eyes, he knew how Hester felt about him. She was constantly trying to get him interested, and it wasn't her fault. It really wasn't. Cash wished with every part of him he could reciprocate. He stiffened and kept rocking with her, trying his best to be at ease, but he felt so clumsy, and even though he didn't trip or anything, he felt supremely out of sync. It was maddening to be so offbeat, and yet he had kept dancing anyway, regardless of how he felt. It wasn't even like he could explain himself. The reason Hester was barking up the completely the wrong tree, he wanted to just stop her as she experimentally slid, slid her hand over his neck, but he couldn't. He couldn't do anything about it. Throat. But is, she, is, she getting, is he getting molested right now? He's getting molested. Because he was a boy, and she was a beautiful girl, and it was a Delta party, and even if he knew the reason, he sure as hell couldn't show it. Ooh. Ooh. This is such a long chapter, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it just said Hester Hitler. <laughs> Keep reading Hitler? No, no, it's just Hester Tilted. That's why you can't read, man. <laughs> I got this, man. You know, I'm gonna let you try. If if your speed is slow, I'm gonna have to cut you off. Can you keep a steady flow of sentences, man? man I'm gonna try. Man, Hester tilted her head shyly at him, and he smiled. And he hopped to the pity he felt for her wasn't too obvious. He hopped the pity. Yeah. He hopped. He oh, hopped the pit. Dang it! The you, hopped. you failed yet again, Star Scream. <laughs> he hoped the pity that he felt for her wasn't too obvious. She was one of the best friends he had. <laughs> and, and he was so <laughs> desperate not to lose her. <laughs> ah! He's just screaming to this mic. It's so horrible! <laughs> Hopped! <laughs> uh, you have a mental breakdown right now. Let's just keep going. I'm done. <laughs> My self-esteem. <laughs> hey, man, you know, there's a lot of geniuses that couldn't read out there. You know, people, apparently R. Kelly can't read. <sighs> and he was desperate not to lose it. <laughs> Things at school had been going so well, so much better than he'd ever anticipated, and he would do anything not to ruin it like he had at home. He must have frowned because Hester suddenly looked concerned, blinking at him, his gaze zeroing in on her cat eyeliner. She had been poring over magazines for hours, probably just to look as good for him as possible, and it made his stomach drop. Something wrong? She said loud enough for him to hear. Oh no, just the thinking. He answered quickly, and she giggled, playing with his sweater. You know you can tell me what's wrong, she continued. No, I really can't. Cast out desperately, but he just laughed a little, pushing far away from her as the record transitioned into a faster song, one that didn't require any intimate touching. I know, he replied. Instead, Hester giggling nervously, fiddling with the ends of her hair. She was smoothing it down as, as she let her eyes drift over the room, and she grabbed Cass's arm. Her face suddenly scarlet. He's staring right at us, she squeaked, looking up at Cass. Cass furrowed his brow. Who? <laughs> hey, man. Not a hey, man, it's all good. Let's right? just say the subject. It's all good. Stop it. You're no fun. <laughs> You failed within a sentence, man. <laughs> <laughs> I 
was like, you got one shot. I said, I'm going to do it. I got this, bro. I should immediately fall face first. I hopped. <laughs> she hopped to know this, man. You know, it, it, it's much clearer in my head until it comes out of my mouth. I'm telling you. Dean, she stressed, glancing around Cass's body. Right at us, and I can't even believe it. Oh, gosh. Here, quick, switch with me, she babbled. Twisting and shoving Cass so that he was standing where she had been previously, he stared at her face, voice, incredulous. Incredulous? What's that? They keep reusing this word, man. I've never heard anyone use the word incredulous. Hester, I hardly think he's looking right at us. He began, but she wasn't listening. Her face bright red, she peered up at Cass, staring to turn her head over her shoulder, but stopping herself. Is he still looking? He was looking right at me. It was horrible. Horrible, Hester, really? Cass teased and finally lifted his head. Is he? Cass sort of moved his head towards the sound of her voice but only got a reflex. He couldn't have done much more. It was frightening, slightly horrible, just like Hester said, but not entirely. No, it couldn't have been all horrible because while he felt trapped, he didn't want to run. <laughs> he didn't want to stop. His heart hammered and immediately felt his palms start to get clammy. As he held his breath, Dean Winchester held his stare. <laughs> He held his breath. Dude, as you hold your breath, I'm holding my stare. I wouldn't let it go. Just watching him from the back wall of the room, his one hand fiddling with a bottle cap and the other holding a beer. Finally, remembering to inhale, he smiled. Small. <laughs> you know, I'm going to let you read. Cass's lips. Yeah, I see. <laughs> Closed legs don't get fed. Oh, God. Please don't make me. Cass' lips felt uncomfortably dry, and he was just about to dart his tongue out to soothe them with the Dean. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I keep going. <laughs> He's going to soothe them with the Dean. Oh, he started to soothe them. Oh, man, soothe them when Dean finally broke the contact. His eyes flittered. Flitting! I got it! I got this, man! Uh, Keep going. Uh, to Hester, and then right back to Cass with no time for any sort of recovery. Cass! <laughs> Come on. Cass opened his eyes to say something. He could. He, and he could feel Hester digging his nails into his sweater! You're freaking out! <laughs> Just read! Man. But it was like he was experiencing it from very far away. Dean raised the beer to his mouth and took a pull from it before lowering it and giving Cass a deeper smile. About to get deep in you tonight, girl. The corners of his mouth digging into the, his cheeks. Cass' fingers twitched and Dean stepped forward from the wall. Cass immediately feared that he was going to go, come straight for him, but Dean walked around to the other side of the room instead. Cass followed every step till, still reeling, waiting for the young man to stop and turn around, and Cass' imagination didn't get any farther than that. Jesus. When did Lisa come in here? Hester whispered, and Cass found reality pilling, piling down on him as he was thrusting back into the moment. Lisa! Why, Lisa? Why? Why? He saw where Dean stood now, and there she was in her yellow party dress, her dark hair laying perfectly on her perfect shoulders, and Dean was leaning his arms over the her on the wall, smiling down at her bright face. Kaz blinked at the sight of Dean grinning at her. She laughed, moving to half, co half cover her red lips with her hand, Jesus, man, and whispered, <laughs> I'm trying, and whispered something into Dean's ear before catching Kaz's eye and holding 
it for a moment. He watched Dean shift backwards and look over his shoulder. He winked. Kai's whole face ignited and Hester scoffed. Okay, I think, you know, that was about 40 minutes of reading we just did. And this chapter is really long. Dude, this is a really long chapter. I just want to stop here because I think I did all the reading I could do today. (laughs) Uh, I don't know where we're at. I'm going to screenshot where we're at so I remember. But yeah. Anyway. Katie! Katie! Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Don't you know we love you, sweet Katie? All I can say is that I like to read. There's no one above you, sweet Katie. It's just that I find it hard to do it. But the new me is really still the real me. I swear you gotta feel me before they try and kill me. They gotta make some choices. They run it out of options. Cause I've been going off and they don't know when it's stopping. And when you get to top and I see that you've been learning. And when I take you 